Okay. Training, training time, coaching and training for the inner circle clients. How is everyone doing? Hopefully you're having a good challenge so far and for the new people who just joined us and this is a good refresher. So we're gonna do these trainings. This is gonna be a new thing. We're gonna train, we're gonna do coaching every Thursday at eight o'clock. We're gonna talk about new things to get you towards your goals. And today we're gonna talk about, today we're gonna talk about, um, we're gonna talk about form. Okay, and not only that, I think it's a good time to talk about it because we're also going to be, um, now if you're, by the way, if you're watching this, just let me know you can hear me okay. You know, just put post, put some likes or posts in the comments so I know you're, um, you're there. And uh, if you're enjoying this or if you're getting value out of it, if you have any questions, just put your questions in the comments. Okay, so we're gonna talk about form today, guys. Now, how it works for the new people, each week we're going to do a new physical challenge and then we have eight tests okay each week is new tests and i was thinking about showing you all four all eight today but i think maybe we'll go through the first four or five because i don't want to like maybe eight would be too much to learn so we'll go through the first one so we're definitely oh hey dana how are you good to see you thanks for coming all right so we're going to go over push-ups okay we're going to go over push-ups first because that's our challenge first and you're going to do this for your team i think dana you're on my team and if you guys aren't sure what team you're on just message just put in the comments what team you're on we'll figure it out as we go okay so there's just a couple things um, we're going to talk about today first is push-ups then we'll get into some planking we'll talk about plank we'll talk about kettlebell swing there's a few other ones that we're going to talk about, okay? All right, Anna Maria, how are you doing? Thank you for joining. Anna Maria, I think you are on my team as well. So I got two of my team members on here. All right, good. We can do our push-up test right now. So we're going to do, we're going to do as many push-ups as we can without losing form. For those of you that are not strong enough at uh, push-ups, you're going to do them from the wall or the counter, okay? But there's Three main things we want to focus on when doing push-ups. I see this a lot, okay? And the, and the main thing is when you get into your push-up position, the elbows flail way up here, okay? This is a really bad position for your shoulders to be in. So we want to make sure that the elbows are below the shoulder level, okay? If I was having a broomstick, let's see. <clears throat> I had a broomstick, okay, the, <clears throat> the broomstick would come across my mid chest. So anywhere, anywhere along here is fine. Anywhere along here is safe. You can even come down here if you want, but up here, that's where it's, you start to get into problems. It gets dangerous. The, the shoulder, there's a very tight, rigid movement for the shoulder to move in this position. So we want to stay down here, okay? So let's translate that to what it looks like on the floor. So same thing, still got this position, right? Okay. And then now <clears throat> I still got the, the same, the same thing with the with those right like that. Okay. So we don't want the broomstick up high where it's coming down my eyes. I see this a lot. Come down. If the broomstick is hitting you in the face, that's not good. Okay. So the line between your hands, if it's hitting you in the, if it's across your face, that's bad for the shoulder. Okay. So we want to make sure that the line between your hands is across the mid chest. Okay. So that's the first one. And if you're not sure, just grab a broomstick and then practice and just check, make sure that you're coming down across the chest like that. Okay. You can come a little lower, a little higher, but there. Okay. That's the first one. The second thing when doing your push-ups, especially for this challenge is the body position, the, the length of your body. So, a lot of people, because the strength isn't there yet, they'll put their butt up like that, or their body will be like that, okay? If your body's like that, then you're, then you're talking about a core issue, and you're gonna probably have to do it from a heightened position. So you're gonna find a chair, two chairs, okay? So I'd rather you do it like this. So I'd rather you do it like this and have proper form than, than slouch. So it's a little easier. The higher the higher the chair is, the easier it gets. So I don't want this, okay? Keep that body straight. And if you could, that's fine for your test, 
Okay, that's fine for your test. My arms are still in good position. They're still down across my chest. Okay. Now, the next thing for when it comes to push-ups is the hand position. I see this a lot. Okay. You don't want to do that. Your, your fingers should be forward. Okay. And the pressure, the center of gravity should be on the palms. Okay. And there's one other one. This is a very subtle one, but it's very important. So when you're doing your push-ups, you want to slide the shoulder blades all the way back and down. They should always be in the back and down position. So those shoulder blades, they kind of move around like this, okay? You want to squeeze the shoulder blades, bring them back so they're almost touching. So you squeeze your shoulder back, okay? And then you keep them there and you do the push up in that position. What that does is it stretches your chest, it brings your shoulder, it opens up the joint in your shoulder and it keeps your shoulder safe. Okay, now you're gonna put that all together. Okay, I know. And if you forget any of these, just rewatch the video. There's one last thing that we wanna make sure when we do the push up, especially in this push up test, is how low you're getting. Okay, if you're going halfway, you're not gonna get very strong. It's better that you do it from the chair and do it properly. Okay, when you go all the way down, we know if you're going low enough because you should be able to stick your tongue out and almost touch the floor. Your tongue should almost touch the floor. Okay, you should be able to lick the floor, okay? That's, so I can almost lick the floor, like there's an inch, two inches away, okay? That's how low you should get. If you can't get that low, then you're gonna use the chair. And the same thing, the same concept. Down, okay? And your, ch your chin or your, you should almost be able to lick the chair, okay? I don't want you to lick the chair, but you know what I mean, okay? So that's how low you should go. And in other words, what that does is it puts your elbow at a right angle, okay? So make, all it does, all you want is that elbow to be at a perfect 90 degree angle. And that will make sure that, so that's the four cues I'm gonna look for in the push-up test, okay? And every time it's, we, the coaches see bad form, we're gonna dock points. So go ahead, oh, hey, yes, how are you? Good, so that's the first test, okay? So those four cues, Make sure you got those taken care of. And when you do your test, you can do it on the counter, on the wall, or on the floor. It doesn't matter, okay, whatever you have. If you're not strong enough to do them on the floor, I would just do them on the, on the, on a chair. Okay, so that's that one. Any questions on any of that? Do you get extra points for that? Uh, uh, yes, you get extra points for doing them on the floor. Yeah, it'll all work out evenly. Once I see the scores, I will calibrate them um, so they all, they're all even. So people that are doing them on the chair, will um, it'll all work out, don't worry. But I will dock points if I see bad form. So if you're not sure if you have bad form, you can do a trial run and send it to your coach and they can check your form, okay? So this is worth points and how it works is over eight weeks, this is gonna add up to quite a few points. So my team's name is No Excuses. Hey, and um, uh, Carolyn's team is, um, I forget her name, but anyways, uh, let's move on. Okay, second, second one is the Spider-Man jumps. Spider-Man jumps. Now, proper Spider-Man, we'll do this in week two, okay? It's, it's all about the back, where the back is, okay? So look how low I'm getting. Ideally, you see the white stripe? In my, in my pants, this stripe is horizontal to the floor. That's how low ideally you should be going. I should, depending on the length of your arms, you should almost be able to touch the floor, okay? That's a proper squat, okay? If you can't get, you don't get that low, you're not getting the full benefit of the squat, okay? Now, if you have knee pain, then that's a different situation, then you're not gonna go that low. That's the only time you're not gonna do that. And what you're gonna do instead, if you got knee pain, what you're gonna do is you're gonna squat down, try to touch a chair and come on up. That'll be your test. That's only if you have knee pain, okay? If you still get pain going to the chair, then you're just, you're just gonna go, have to go halfway. But if you have no knee pain, I want proper Spider-Man squat. So it looks like this, okay? So you're gonna drive down, your fingers are gonna touch the floor every single time and your feet come off the floor every single time, okay? So that'll be for next week. And the last tip is the spine. Okay, we're gonna talk about, this is the safety cue, okay? I see a lot of this. Okay, see my back is all rounded. Okay, that's a terrible, that's terrible. 
You want to make sure that your back is neutral. Okay. So in other words, if you put a broomstick on your back, it's still it's still the same when I squat. Okay, it's pretty much the same. It's the same when I stand up. It's the same when I come down. Okay, if you're deviating from the broomstick, then you got to work on your flexibility. Okay, so be cognizant of that when you do your squat. Let's talk about knee safety. Knee safety. Now, the safest thing for your knee, there's no 100% right rule on this. There's different opinions, but the general rule is, you see my toes. Let's talk about toes. Toe position, okay? Generally, the way the knee goes is the way the toe goes. So in other words, my knees are going in this direction, okay? So if my knees are pointing in that direction of the broomstick, then my toes should be in the same direction. So you don't want your toes like that, and then your knees go out, okay? Your toes are in the same direction, so they're out slightly, they're in the same direction as the broomstick, okay? Now hopefully that makes sense. Now there is a, you can do a squat with your toes straight. Some people like that. If you're gonna do that, then you're, then you're gonna keep your knees the same direction. Okay, so your knees stay the same direction, okay? But generally, 99% of the time, toes are slightly turned out, okay, when you squat and your knees follow the direction of your toes, okay? Now, the last thing I'll talk about with the knee, with the squat, is how far the knee goes. Generally, usually, the knee doesn't pass the toe, okay? So your knees aren't going to be way out there. Okay, you want to keep your knees, if you had a peg, if you had a, if you had a broomstick here or a wall, your knee stays behind the toes, okay? So focus on that. There's a lot to think about in the squat. You wouldn't think there is, but there is. Now I should talk about one more thing. I see this a lot too, and this can cause knee pain, so we want to make sure you're not doing this. Heels up, if heels are up, I see this. Heels in the air, okay, and then you see, and you squat with your heels in the air. That is called a sissy squat. We don't do those anymore, okay? That's just the name they gave it back in the day. I don't know why. But it actually puts a tremendous amount of force on your knees, and it's not safe. So you actually, the center of gravity should be lean back, sit on the heels, okay? So my center of gravity is on my heels, not my toes. Keep your center of gravity on the heels. So when you squat down, all my weight is on my heels. My toes are almost coming off the floor, okay? So remember those cues, and then your knees will be fine. Now the width, a lot of people have questions about the width. The width doesn't matter. It's going to depend on the frame of your hips. Some people have wide hips, narrow hips. It doesn't really matter for that. As long as your knees follow the path of your toes, you'll be fine. Any questions about that? All right, let's keep trucking. Plank is next, plank. Now this one, I see done wrong all the time. Okay, so let's go over this. <clears throat> and I, these are the common mistakes that I see. First one, what's, what happens is this, butts in the air, okay? Butts in the air. Now the reason that's, that happens is because your strength isn't there yet unfortunately, and then what, what we do naturally is we tend to put our butts in the air because that's a natural leverage. Now you're giving your body leverage. It's like a house, the top of a house. That's why houses are built this way with two, because it, now it's supporting each other and you're actually not doing any work, okay? When your body's straight, you're doing work. When you put your butt in the air, now there's leverage and you're not using your abdominals and your core anymore. There's no work. Okay, we want to make sure that the body's straight. Okay, so if you're doing that, you're going to try to resist the temptation. If you still absolutely cannot keep your body straight, then you're going to have to do the same thing you did with the push ups, is you're going to have to come off the floor a little bit until you get stronger. Okay, so you're going to have to get go to a chair. Okay, and, and focus on keeping the body straight. So I'm still I'm on the chair, but my body's still straight. My body's straight. So I'm still using my core. Okay, my butt's not in the air. Okay. You want to make sure the body's straight. Now, this is really easy. So if it's too easy, you might have to calibrate. 
find something that's just a little bit off the floor, maybe like that. You do it like this, okay? So this is pretty challenging, but it's still, it's not too extremely difficult. I can still keep proper form, okay? We don't want this, because you won't get strong doing this. All that'll do is put strain on your back, okay? That's why you get a lot of back pain. Sometimes it's because there's a lot of reasons, but one of them is just you're, you got your butt in the air. Okay, so that's one. Second thing I see all the time you got to fix is where your arms are. Just like the push up, there should be perfect 90 degrees. Okay, 90 degrees here and then 90 degrees there. Okay, if you can remember that, you'll be fine. What happens though is I start to see this where elbows slide forward. Now you've just made the plank a lot harder than it has to be. Okay, which is an advanced exercise. But what that does is if you're, don't, if you're not strong, it's gonna put strain on your back. So if you're not ready for it, you'll get strength. So we wanna make sure the elbows are under the shoulder. So if we do it in real life, it looks like this. Okay, so this is the proper way. Okay, perfect, 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degrees. Okay, and this is, this is the wrong way to do it where your elbows are way out there. Okay, now that's, I'm really feeling my core work. And it's a great exercise, but that's advanced. If you're, if you're not ready for that, you might get discomfort. So make sure the elbows are staying right under the shoulders, okay? Those are the two big ones for the plank. And the third, the third thing I'll talk about with the plank is the core activation, okay? We wanna talk about what you're doing with your core. You're just not relaxing and letting your tummy hang out. You want, what we wanna do is actively engage and make sure that your muscles are kind of tightened up. We wanna tighten up and pulling your tummy a little bit and brace, okay? Just think, um, just think about when you get into cold water, uh, when you step in cold water, you kind of, you know, you know that feeling where you, you're walking into a cold lake, you pull your tummy in. So this is the same sort of thing. You pull your tummy in and then clench and squeeze and keep it braced, okay? Yeah. That will help you get stronger. Yes, it makes the exercise more difficult, but that's what works your core, okay? What we don't wanna do is just relax, let your belly hang out, not think about it, and just do this and slouch. You see this a lot, okay? That's just gonna hurt the back, okay? So when we get to the plank test, or if you're doing it in class, we wanna make sure that you're doing it properly. If, you, if you're losing too much form, you're gonna to have to take a break, okay? All right, any questions about that so far? Okay. Oh, sorry, I didn't see your question, Dana. The push-up tips are helpful. Can you repeat the hand position you just said? Okay, third tip, the hand position. So the hand position should be fingers are in the same direction as your, well, they should be away from you. Your fingers should be like this. So you don't wanna be like this, okay? Your fingers should be up and your center of gravity should be on the palms. So you should be putting pressure on the palms of your hands, okay? You should feel it across your chest. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, next one. So we did the plank, we did the, okay, we, we should do the wall sit next. So we're gonna get to the wall sit. And the wall sit is really, really straightforward. Okay, and I see this done wrong all the time as well. Just think 90 degrees and you won't go wrong, okay? 90 degrees is not, is, the right answer 90% of the time, okay? So just keep everything at 90 degrees, okay? Keep your knees at 90 degrees, keep your body to your legs at 90 degrees, and then you'll be fine. And I'll, I'll have to move the camera so you, uh, you can see. And then at any time you're not at 90 degrees, that's when you start to put strain on, unnecessary strain on the joints. So let's see if I can show you over here, okay? I saw this a lot in the past. So we wanna make sure so I'll show you the wrong way first. This is the wrong way. Okay, so this would be the lazy way. So I'm higher than I should be when the stripe of my pants should be perfectly straight, okay? You can see though, there's not a 90 degree angle yet. My feet are too far away. So we wanna get those feet up. Okay, this is, this is almost perfect. Okay, that's about 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, okay? That makes it much harder, okay? Everyone's built a little different. You can go slightly higher, slightly lower, but if you're really low, that's gonna put a tremendous amount of force on your knees. You don't want that. And you don't wanna to be too high either. It doesn't, you won't get any benefit. So, and that's that. And make sure that you 
just you know cross your arms or hands on your hips okay Woo! so that's that one my legs are already i got i'm weak at that one i gotta work at that one so that's 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 four tests right there we should really go over the burpees because that one's an easy one to get hurt in and uh we should go over that so you don't do it improperly in the class and the best way i can probably explain it is okay Maybe I'll show you the wrong way to do it and then I'll show you the right way to do it. But in a burpee, you want to, you want to um, rotate your body as fast as possible. You want to minimize the amount of time you're bent over. So you don't really want to ever be bent over if you can help it. So you basically, you're in an athletic stance and then you're in a plank and then you're back to an athletic stance. There isn't much room in between. You just kind of pop up, pop up, pop up. If you don't have the strength for it, you'll have to step. But let's start with the regular burpee first. Then I'll show you the easier version. Okay. So when we do the burpee, okay, we get into a proper squat. This is called the athletic stance. Okay. So my knees are nice and wide. Knees are nice and wide. Back is straight and neutral. Okay. And then from here, we just pop into a plank. And this is the safest for our back. So our hands go down to the floor, pop out. Okay, now we're in a plank position. This is where everyone gets it wrong, is we naturally want to do this, okay? These are burpees that we did in the 1950s. We don't do them like this anymore because they're not good for your knees or your back. One more time, so you, if you're doing this, okay? Let me show you. Your toes are way out. Your knees are way over your toes. You're just asking for problems. So we're gonna do it differently. We're gonna go into an athletic stance, okay? So we start plank position, and then as quickly as you can, you're gonna rotate your whole body into an athletic stance. So there's no strain on the back. You're in the athletic stance. Your quads are doing a lot of the work. Your knees are back, so they're safe, okay? Drop back down, okay? One more time. We wanna quickly get into athletic, super fast. So that's the right way to do it, as opposed to this, okay? This is just going to put pressure on those knees and just going to cause you some problems later on in the future, okay? So put, let's put it all together. So we squat, drop, up, my feet are flat, okay? Jump up, down. It looks like this from the front. Down, okay? Knees are apart, feet are apart. Body's in an athletic stance, okay? Okay, so you, let's say that you don't have the strength to be jumping up and down like that. What do you do? Okay, there's two ways you can do it. You can step or you can use a chair. So, let me get my breath back. Okay, so maybe we'll, I'll show you the chair first. Okay, so you can't go to the ground for whatever reason. So then what you're gonna do you put the chair to do the same thing. Okay, you just, you just squat down to the chair. Chairs go there, hands are there. Hope. Okay. And then up. Hope. And up. So you're still in the athletic stance, just not as low. Okay, you're about there. Okay. Out to a plank. And then up. Okay. Now, if the jumping is going to hurt you, then you're just simply going to squat, touch the chair, step back. Step up, reach, step back, okay? So those are the three variations. So in when you're doing your workouts, if for some reason you can't do a regular burpee, no problem. Start with level one, which was the stepping on the bench. Make sure you have a chair. You'll be golden, okay? So you're gonna do it that way for your test. You know your body best. You're gonna pick, you pick the one that works best for you, okay? Yeah. Oh, don't be sorry. That's all good, Dana. No worries. Okay, we're just trucking. We're just pushing through these. Okay, next one. Uh, let's talk about the kettle swing because that one is important and it gets done wrong all the time. Okay. So the first thing that people want to do when they're learning the kettlebell is they mix it up with the squat. Okay. You got to think about when you do the kettlebells, we want to think about what muscles we're trying to work, and then it'll make a lot more sense, okay? 
The kettlebell swing, there's different types, but we're going to always talk about, um, when, I'm, when I'm talking about kettle swings, I refer to the Russian classic kettlebell swing, which means we're going to work on the hamstrings, all the muscles from the back of the legs, the butt, low back, middle back, upper back, okay? So in core, okay, so you're not working your quads, you're not doing a squat, we're bending over, it's very similar to a deadlift, okay? If you, a deadlift would be like a bent over deadlift, would be like this position, okay? This would be a deadlift, so I'm, work, I'm trying to work on the hamstring, okay? But it's a very fast movement. Okay. So if you got a really weak back, and if you find that the kettlebell swings are bothering your back, then you're gonna start with no weight, okay? And you're, gonna, you're just gonna put your hands at your side, or we're gonna put your arms back like so, Put your bum all the way back. Spine is neutral. So look in the mirror, make sure it's neutral. And then you're slowly gonna just shift your hips up to a straight line, okay? And then hinge back, arms back and repeat. And then if you wanna add a little speed, you can add a little speed, okay? So that would be level one. Now, regardless if you're doing level one, level two, or level three, level three being advanced, the broomstick, when in doubt, Check with the broomstick, okay? This is how my chiropractor taught me a long time ago to train your back, okay? So you put a broomstick on there, okay? And then you'll know, you know, you'll feel a nice stretch in the back of the legs, like spine is neutral. That's what's gonna protect your back, okay? The danger comes when bending over, the danger comes when your back, I don't even want to demo, but when you, bend, when you, when you round your back like that, okay? That's where the danger is because there's little discs in your spine. They're like fluid wrapped in tissue and they're like little cushions between each vertebra and they get squished when you bend over. And the pressure on those discs becomes tremendous when you round your back. So if you round your back, the biomechanical uh, force, okay, gets, it multiplies by like tenfold. It's, it's tremendous. So to keep the minimal, so, to, so you don't squeeze those little discs, those little cushions, we don't want to squeeze them. We want to keep them safe. And to do that, you keep your spine straight. So your spine, regardless if you're bent over or not, you're not rounding your back. The disc gets squished when you round your back, okay? So if you, don't want to, if you don't want any problems with the discs, you want to make sure that the spine, so just pretend you got this metal pole down your, taped to your back, or just pretend that your spine, just for doing the exercise, is a pole. Okay, you can't bend the pole. You can only bend at the hips. That's it. If you do this motion, okay, you'll be safe. It's when you round your back is when you get into trouble. Lifting heavy weight with a rounded back, that's where the discs get, you know, so we're going to avoid that and then you'll be fine. That's the main thing. So my back is straight here. It's straight here. Okay. No matter what I'm doing, I'm bending it down here. Okay. If you're not sure if your back is rounding, you're going to have to look in a mirror and check it. And eventually over time, you'll just know. It takes, it takes, you know, a couple months to really get the feel for it, but use the broomstick. Okay. So let's put it all together. So we talked about the back. So what do you do with the swing? We know what muscles we're working. We know what the spine is supposed to look like. What do you do with the arms? Because I see a lot of people doing weird things with the arms. The classic swing is just think, start way back here. Your legs are up high, right in the, in the groin, like we're about to pass a football. Okay, I'm about to pass a football. Behind me, it's a football hut, literally. Your legs are up high, okay? So when I hold it by the horns, you start up high, you hit your legs, and then one quick swift movement, your hips thrust forward to here. Hit your legs and thrust. Hit your legs and thrust, okay? Arms do not go above your shoulders. Arms are here. They don't go up here, okay? Classic swing is just to here. There is an exercise where you go over the head, that's something else. We're just talking about the classic swing right now, okay? Go here, to here, to here, okay? And I have to talk about one more thing to save the back. This is really important, so listen up. When you do the kettle swing and you finish at the top of the move, 
Okay, a lot of people, they really want to work their glutes, but what they end up happening is they kind of do this. Okay, they go beyond, they were in a straight line, their spine is straight, but all of a sudden then they finish like that, okay? You don't want to do that either, because now you're not in a straight line anymore. You push, put pressure on your vertebra and your lower back, okay? We want that proper curve the whole time. The curve never deviates. You never deviate from your proper spinal alignment, okay? The only thing that's changing is what the hips are doing. Hips go back, be rude, stick your butt back. You come up, be rude, and so on, okay? So it's almost like a stripper. I always say it's like a, looks like a stripper. Strippers. So go anyways. So you hinge over, okay, this is the proper swing. Hit your thighs, come up to your shoulders. Hit your thighs up to the shoulders, okay? You do it right, you should feel it in the hands. You'll feel a little bit in the back because it is a back exercise. And you want to clench your glutes at the top of the move, okay? So we try to remember those cues. If this might be one of those videos, you're gonna have to go back and replay again. And in fact, I recommend you go one step further and videotape yourself and then check your form, okay? Uh, go and check it and send it to a coach and see if you need correcting, okay? Especially if you are prone to any discomfort with any of these exercises. So those are the five big ones. Those are the five big ones, okay? And um, trying to think if there's any other ones we should really cover today. Yeah, those are, I think those are the, those are good. I think those are good because <clears throat> your brain's probably like full of information now. I think that's probably plenty. So we'll talk about the last three in the next training. So we're gonna do these trainings every Thursday and they're gonna be different. Next Thursday, maybe it'll be nutrition, maybe it'll be mindset, but it'll be something just for the clients we do every Thursday that'll help you progress forward. So there'll be an opportunity for you to ask questions, to get together as a community, meet up with everybody. So let's make it a fun thing where we meet and it's a regular Thursday night thing. And it'll be consistent. We'll be doing, I'll be doing these uh, every Thursday night at eight o'clock. I think it'll just, it'll help you stay uh, engaged and motivated and it's great for the challenge. So does anybody have any questions before I sign off? I see you got Anna Maria, Dana, just type your questions. It doesn't look like it, okay. So hopefully you got a lot of value out of that. If you got value out of that, just put in the comments. Um, safe, put safe, put safe in the comments if you feel safer now, okay? And, uh, or if you feel, if you feeling good. So hopefully you've gotten, by now, those of you in the challenge that you've started your modules, you've done some workouts, you've got um, in touch with your team captain and the push-up test will be due Monday night, okay? So Monday night, the push-up test will be due, okay? So when will you tell us? Monday, maybe you will. When will you tell us what we are supposed to do for the challenge? When will I tell you? Um, I will. I will message you. I will. I will message you when you every week. I'm going to try to message you on WhatsApp. Okay, so Dana, I think you're on the WhatsApp group now. And I'm also gonna email you. So check your email and check your WhatsApp. And I'm gonna tell you um, each week. So each week we're gonna be talking on the WhatsApp. Try to get engaged on the WhatsApp group, on the team group. It's called No Excuses, okay? Okay. Okay, great. Okay, awesome. Yeah, great, Dana, great, Anna Maria. Well, I'm so happy that you joined. It's good to see you guys. So high five, okay? And um, I see you guys are really like, you're really active in Rochelle's workout and Annika's workout and Carolyn's workouts. It's great, it's love, it's great. You guys are really working hard and it's good to see you enjoying the coaches. They seem to really, um, their classes are awesome. So keep um, going and just use, use common sense and use these safety cues when you're in their workouts and you'll be much better off. If you have any questions, post them in the comments, okay? And uh, I'm gonna sign off. All right, high five, and we'll see you next class, or next training. All right, bye. Bye-bye. You're welcome, Dana. See ya.